Hello, people. How you doing? Welcome back. Okay, so I'm going to get right to this because I'm going to be totally honest with you. I have a lot to do today. I actually have a um, counseling session to do today, so I need to get this done because this takes precedence, but I don't want to have that person waiting um, because I, I know if you listened to me from the beginning in a few uh, videos earlier, I told you guys that I ministered for 10 years. Um, I have a prayer group that I lead. I also do individual counseling, um, you know, by way of the Holy Spirit nothing to do with me all the holy spirit which brings me to the topic for today um <clears throat> i'm going to talk about the holy spirit the importance of the holy spirit in our lives briefly um and prophesying and prophecy the difference okay um and as it pertains to the different uh gifts and um the callings that the calling on, on your life um which still try ties into a gift but I'll explain that in a minute. But what I want to start off by saying uh, is I know everybody is looking at what's going on in the news. And honestly, and, you know, just what's going on in the United States of America. Because I don't know how many people may be clicking on here that may be outside of America. The United States of America. <sighs> Give me a little understanding today. Excuse me. I've been up since 3 o'clock. Uh, praying with my prayer group we get up every other um sunday at three to pray and usually we're on for several hours so today is one of my busier days because even after that i get a few hours i can go back to sleep if i like uh then i gotta get back up and today i was prompted to do the video but i also have a session individual session today one-on-one -on -one. um so as i was saying there's a lot going on in the United States of America with this election, with this um, allegedly fraud and so forth, whatever. Okay. If you've been following me for a minute, you already know how I stand on this. But just in case you haven't, let me be really clear. There's definitely fraud. Okay. I know some of you may not agree with me. I'm not being arrogant when I say I can't worry about that. What I'm going to say is this. Even though you may not agree with me, do me a favor. If you're still looking, do me a favor. Hear me out. Just give me a chance. True intelligence is people who, and I'm not trying to insult anybody. I'm being honest with you. True intelligent person is one that's going to be a little more emotionally intelligent. Meaning, you're going to exhibit self-awareness. Uh, you know, you're going to be able to, you know, see things from not just your perspective, but from someone else's perspective as well. That's just a part of emotional intelligence. Um, but I'm asking you to show me your emotional intelligence, okay? And just hear me out. Just give me a chance. Don't get in your feelings. Don't get upset. Don't just make a rash decision based on what everybody around you is saying. What you think you understand. Because um, I'm not going to go all into the whole thing. I put that in another video, U.S. policy and so forth. Um, you got to go back and look at that. I'll try to even put that at the end of this video. Matter of fact, that's what I'll do. I'll make that a video that you can, you know, it'll show itself at the end. So if you want to, you can click on that and then you can just see that. And then that will make sense as to what I'm saying here. But I'm not going to talk a lot about that election today. I'm not. That's not my purpose for getting on here. And what I'm about to talk about is even more important in some way. It's more important. Um, because God got this whole thing. Okay. God got us. He got it. So when I say hear me out, what I want to say is this. A while ago, the Lord told me that he was using President Trump. He told me two things. He said he was going to win the election and that he was using him. Now, you could say, okay, well, maybe you're right about that. And maybe that was true because clearly he did win the election, right? And, and, and I'm not one to try to tell you something after the fact. That ain't me. You just won't hear me say anything at all because I don't have time to be playing with God and I'm definitely not going to play. I'm not playing with you guys, but I'm definitely not going to play with God. I don't, I'm not going to do that. Um, I fight my flesh all the time to make sure that I'm on the up and up when it comes to saying what God has said, speaking his word, even to the people that I counsel because that is important to God. It is important to me. I do not want to hurt anybody. I do. I, I, I'm a hybrid. I'm an apostolic and prophetic. Um... And I do give people prophetic words. I do give people, you know, um, words of wisdom, which has revelation, right? 
um, to help them solve problems, to give them a strategy for something in their daily lives. I do that all the time. But I'm very careful not to do that unless I really feel strongly that this is by way of the Holy Spirit. Even though I may not be getting the information and specifically at that time from God, He doesn't let my words fall to the ground because I tap into using His Word and really having a heart for God's people. Um, you know, because He He loves His people. Um, he loves everybody, even those that are not doing what they're supposed to do. He loves them. But at the end of the day, his word is his word. And if they don't do certain things or if they're not in a certain place, they will end up um, in that place that nobody wants to go to, right? Okay. That's not the message. But getting back to what I'm saying, for those people who I'm asking you just to hear me out, you may even say that, well, he told you that he was going to win and he told you that he was using him. Well, that don't mean that he's supposed to serve another term. That would be true if it wasn't for the fact that there's other prophets who I know have a proven track record that I follow, that I know other people who God has put me in their lives to, to partner with their ministry or to be under their ministry who also, they listen to them. And the Bible says, submit ourselves unto God and believe his pro prophets so shall we prosper. Okay. So it comes a time when you have to also listen to prophets because they are the mouthpiece of God, okay? They will give you God's word. Now we're talking about prophets that are tried and true, prophets who truly are obedient and doing what God is telling them to do. Now I know that's difficult because you go to different churches and places and all churches are not bad, okay? Regardless of what you people say sometimes, the church has some issues. Of course they do. They're always going to have some kind of issue to some degree because it's people in the church. People are not perfect. You're never going to find a perfect person. You're never going to really find a perfect church. But you want to find that church that's doing most of the things right. You know what I'm saying? And even if they do something wrong, just like we're supposed to do in our individual lives, they admit it. They repent. If they have to apologize, they apologize. That's all God wants. He's looking for us to really uh, use Jesus as our uh, example. Because that's what he is. He's our example. He wants us to be... The salt and the light of the earth, okay? Now, uh, because I believe the prophets, and I know also this time on ground what I heard, God also had given, now I'm sure he had given other prophets things, you know, way before me. I know he had. Matter of fact, he did. I mean, because there were prophets talking about they got stuff way back. Uh, like, I put Kim Clement on my channel. There were prophets, uh, Hank Kuhneman said him and Kim Clement, I didn't even know they knew each other, right? Hank Kuhneman is an awesome prophet, too. And he was speaking about it. And he had gotten stuff years ago, all the way up to now. Come on, people. You know, when you go back and you really do your research and you listen and you know the time and these different things. Sometimes you'd be like, well, is that date? They lying about the date? Some stuff, you can look at the picture and what they got on and you know, that was back in the day. But they were getting bits and pieces of what was going to take place several years out. I get that type of stuff too. Not always for the United States of America. Although I do get it for the United States of America. I believe I am a nation's prophet. Um, but I definitely um, get it for my individual life and for others. And we might not always see the manifestation right away, but we'll eventually see it. Okay. So I'm just saying, just because you don't like Trump, just because you think that he's a little rough around the edges, which I agree he is. He has his, his moments. But nobody's perfect. And he's like Cyrus. Okay. Um... God is working with him. God can use anybody. If you know know your Bible, he can use a donkey. He can use any person. He definitely will use a person, right? He'll use, he'll let the rain or the sunshine on the wicked and the righteous, okay? Um, so at the end of the day, just be open. If you really love God, if you're really a believer and a follower, because there's a difference, of the Lord Jesus Christ, you want to hear what I'm saying. You want to go back and look at my videos where I really take the time and really go through it. I can't do that today because I'm not on for that today. In the next 10 minutes, I want to get out what I actually came here to do. But I wanted to start with that because I know people are scared. People are hurting. Um, and, and I'm not saying it's to brag, but quite frankly, I'm not. Not because I am trying to be blissfully ignorant. No, I don't have time for that. I just know what God is saying. He told me that he wants to give us uh, insurmountable grace for the next several years. He told me personally, he told me, I haven't heard anybody say certain things specifically. I've heard them say certain things that also God gave me. And then I've heard them say things he didn't even give me, right? Because we all prophesy in part. So 
I have respect for the next prophet, you know, and I'm not even on a big platform yet, but um, I have respect for them, and I'm sure they would have respect for me. I see that, that some of them work together, and I think that's beautiful. That's awesome, you know what I mean? So God would give things to each other. So you put together, you get a bigger picture of what's going on. But he even told me, I, I woke up saying, process processes it's like i was figuring something out it was, it was it was coming to me and all of a sudden i woke up saying due process i was like due process now for those that don't know i have a legal background for like 18 years i worked as a, a paralegal i was a real estate agent for six seven years um title producer licensed title producer um so I have a legal background, right? So God will speak to you sometimes in that language because he, his, his kingdom is, you know, a government, right? But sometimes he'll do it too because that may be what you're going to be able to understand and what you're used to. Uh, you could be a farmer, so then he's going to speak to you a lot about things, use a lot of terms and things having to do with the farm because he knows you understand that. And that's the whole thing about dreams. Which one day, I know I said it in another video, I will try to give it like a mini thing on dreams, but it's so difficult because I don't want to be on here too long because I know people have a short attention span, right? So I try to, I'm trying to, you know, people tell me to try to cut it down some. My branding uh, people told me, you know, not to be so lengthy with it. Um, I'm still having my website built. That's going to still be another few months and some other things. I have some courses coming out. So just hanging in with me and I'll be able to you know continue to do some things the lord told me not too long ago that out of the 30 something subscribers that i have yay i love each and every one of you i pray i thank you for your support but he did tell me that about four three i think he said three to four actually get on here and look at the videos right so i was like oh wow god will leave the 99 to go get the one um so he'll use us for what it is that we need to do to help those people who are really just hungry for something because my personality may not work for some other people don't mean i'm less of a, a child of god or a, a apostle or prophet or you know what it is that god has called me to do the gift that he's given me the office he's put me in but it just may not be for a certain group of people but but trust me when he's calling you to something i've been anointed okay but when but when he's appointed you and he called you for something you're going to have that set of people that could be a several hundred that could be several thousand that could be several million people that need to hear your voice that's waiting to hear your voice right um and that's what you're called to do so anyway um i just wanted to say that this don't look at things based off personality i'm not saying personality is not important i'm just saying if you really are trust trusting god and you're close to god you're going to pray about this thing if you're not sure about it because I know a lot of people like I said are afraid um, they're concerned they're like oh my god what's going on the news media is lying to you I will tell you that okay I know it's hard to believe I, I ain't gonna lie I couldn't believe it even though I never really looked at a lot of news anyway even when I was growing up I didn't really like news um, but they're actually not but I used to feel like we could trust them a little bit remember eyewitness news nine news on your side news or whatever it was where they were coming to your neighborhood if you if you gave them a good story and you said hey I'm the little man and I feel like I've been you know uh done wrong i feel like you know um i've been discriminated against or something's going on you know they will come and investigate for you because they were the they were the news for the people okay um first amendment rights you know what I mean? if you didn't feel like your, your voice was going to be heard they would put you in front of the camera and give you a spotlight give you a platform to speak even if it was for two minutes the point is that can make a difference based on your situation because nobody else would listen to you right well, the news don't do that really anymore, okay? Unless it benefits them, then they're right there, okay? So, but it's all, it, but a lot of it is scripted, right? And if you're saying too much, they'll just cut you off. I mean, back in the day, you'd be like, that is so crazy. So and so said this. He all up in the cameras, you know, because it wasn't scripted, you know, or not as much, nearly as much as it is now. But at the end of the day, um, yeah, the news is lying. The Lord said the news is like uh, false prophets of Baal. Okay, for those that don't know what that is, that'll give you something to look up and start researching the Bible. Um, but I do believe and still believe Trump's going to win. God got this covered. I don't. I couldn't tell you how it's going to happen. I know a little bit about politics. I know a lot about the law. I understand God. Okay, I understand my God, my relationship with my God, and you should yours too. Your relationship with God too. You should understand that. And so that's where you should start pray 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 okay pray about it and be open don't pray about it with a with a with a bias pray about it and say lord you know what i don't know what these people are saying but i'm gonna let that go and i really want to know is this something else you're saying that i'm not understanding 
And trust me, if you sincere about that statement, he gonna know it because he the one changed my mind. Oh yeah, I wasn't going to vote for Trump the first time nor the second time. I'm being totally transparent here. I'm being honest. I'm a prophet. I hear God about a lot of things uh, for the nation, even for individual people's lives. For myself sometimes, of course. But rarely, usually people tell me more things about me, usually. Um, because God uses our gifts to help other people, of course, right? But no, he do. You know, he does help. It is to benefit you, too. Um, to profit you as well. But I, so I, I got caught up in that trap. I'll be honest with you. People were texting me stuff because I don't really look at news. So I was trusting friends and family because I didn't look at politics as being that important in the kingdom of God. But trust me, Trump is not our savior. Jesus Christ already did that. God is who we trust. In God we trust, okay? But he got to use people. We have to partner with him. So he's using Trump. So I voted for him the second time. I didn't get to vote for nobody the first time. I was about to go vote for uh, Hillary. That would have been a mistake. But I didn't know that at the time. I didn't. I'm even more wiser and since 2016 to now than I was, you know. So we constantly continue to grow. And you got to be open and flexible to do that with God. You got to let Him show you. He started to correct me. Oh, He did about a few months ago about how I was looking at the whole campaign stuff. And the closer it got to getting ready to go vote, He started to really give it to me. And I know when I hear God. I was like, oh. And the reason why he can do that to me is because I'm always seeking him. Um, I'm no no special than nobody else. But if you don't seek him all the time, then he got to do it another way with you. He might have to send somebody across your path. Because you don't seek him enough, but he knows you love him and you know that you're trying. So then he'll make sure you, you're, you're safe, that you know the truth, by giving it to somebody else that maybe you'll trust. And he'll give it to you. Um, or maybe he gives you a dream. Because God, that's conversation. God speaks to us in our dreams. And you'd be like, why did I have that dream? But that dream would start you on a thought process to make you say, wait a minute. God, are you speaking to me about this election? And then you start to, you know, open your mind up to it. Then all of a sudden you start seeing things you didn't know that was there. Okay, you st your discernment picks up. You start discerning things with the news people. When you're looking at them, you're like, why do they look like they lying? Or why do they just feel like something's off about what they're reporting now? I mean, all kinds of things can happen because God is God, right? But for me, he just spoke it to me and then started giving me understanding. And I was like, oh, my God. So he started telling me. So I got a word then and I got a word now about America. And so I'm in agreement with the rest of the other prophets that are speaking this word. And so, yeah, I voted for him. Not ashamed of it. Not going to be. Because I know when God tells me something, I can put, take that to the bank. I can believe that. So I'm telling you guys that are afraid and don't know what's going on. Just trust God. Um, I'm not even telling you to trust me. I just said, hear me out, <laughs> okay? Um, I would like that you would trust me. I would never try to lead you astray. But you got to build that. He uses relationship for people, right? So you don't really know me, but if you're on here looking, you're probably trying to get to know me. And if you look at me long enough, you'll realize you can trust me. You know what I mean? If I'm wrong, I'll say I'm wrong. I'm like, oh my God, I was wrong. And this is what I learned from that. And I think I was wrong because it is, you know. Um, but I'm usually not going to open my mouth unless I really know. Uh, but that doesn't mean that I can't, I might get the word right. That don't mean that I might get the interpretation off. I mean, it can happen. Nobody's perfect. And I'm still working on everything myself, right? But I'm definitely in the right place and I have a good heart and I have a heart for people. I love the Lord and I'm definitely not going to try to, you know, lead you astray. I can't stand that. I'm always praying that to God. Lord, help me to know the truth um, so that I can give others the truth. I don't want to mislead anybody. I don't want to hurt anybody. That's just me, Okay. Um, I don't want to be like some of these people I've seen, and I'm not going to say what, because I'm not trying to do that. Unless God put it on my heart to call somebody out, I'm not doing that. I will defend his word, but I don't need to defend his word all the time and calling people out, okay? Um, and that's just my opinion. Um, if God sees it differently, he can. He knows he can talk to me about it, and I'll change it. Like, y'all, guess what? I need to call some folks out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The Lord told me to do this. And if he told me, I would do it. All right, real quick, I wanted to tell you guys this. For, over the, for the last month, I have, um, give me another five or ten minutes, um, and I'll be done with this. Um, over the last month, this is the word that I actually came on to give you. Um, <clears throat> the Lord has started talking to me about, um, the, the Holy, uh, the, uh, um, the baptism of the Holy Spirit by fire, right? Um, there's tongues that we get to edify ourselves, and then there's the tongues that, you know, puts us into a place of more power and authority with you know within the body to be able to do what it is that God's called us to do and so I just want to 
read this word, this scripture. The scriptures, I'm basing it on the scripture. Um, and I'm looking for my scripture because I got this stuff written down. Stuff that I get sometimes for my, you know, teaching. Um, here we go. 1 Corinthians 14, and this is verses 2 through 5. I'm sure you guys, if you go to church, you've heard it before. But let me just read this. 1 Corinthians 14, verses 2 through 5. Sorry I don't have the fancy stuff yet, guys, where I can put the scripture on the bottom of the screen or whatever. But maybe I can figure out, because I got this video equipment, but maybe I can figure out how to do it before I post it, right? Because this is not live, of course. Um, but I'll post this right after I record it. So. Um, 1 Corinthians 14, verses 2 through 5. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. But no man understandeth him, how bad in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Okay, so we already know that that's really talking about what? People who have tongues and sometimes you hear them and they're praying, but there's nobody interpreting what they're saying. Because a lot of times that's just edifying them, strengthening them while they pray. Whether they're praying for you or themselves or someone else. Um, that's a good thing, but that's for them. It's to edify them, to strengthen them. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and to exhortation and comfort now let me get right to it prophesy right Pro prophesy p-r-o-p-h-e-s-y prophesy is not the same as prophecy i even heard someone say well prophesy is when you're saying the prophecy right <laughs> so no that's not true um, actually, prophesying is exhortation, comfort, and edification, okay, of the body. Um, and let me prove that to you. There's a, wait a minute, give me a moment because I'm just going through my little notes and stuff I had to write down here. Okay, the, the actual definition of pro, uh, to prophesy, a prophesy uh, to prophesy is to predict something or to utter something okay um, wait a minute. that didn't hold on one second I'm sorry I had looked this thing up and then it just blanked out on me I was looking at my phone so give me a moment just for this because I didn't write this down in my notes yet but okay there we go all right but I can easily pull it back up so it's not a big deal Okay, to prophesy is to predict something or to utter something inspired by one's God. That would be, and you're going to see the difference when I tell you about the prophecy. Prophesy, prophecy, two different things. Prophesying is, and, and let me just read that definition again. To prophesy is to predict something to, or to utter something inspired by one's God. That, when you say one's God, that's almost like a group of people. That's what it puts me in the mind of, right? One's God your God right a group of people somebody's somebody's prophesying to people because they all believe in the same God so they're able to edify those people they're able to comfort those people they're able to exhort those people how because they're reading um not necessarily reading at that moment but they could be but they are pulling from the Word of God they're pulling from what they know about God that's why you're supposed to study to show yourself approved which I'm going to go into that in a second because that's got to do with what the Lord has been speaking about in this last month that he wanted me to put out on this video because he was talking to me about it sometimes God will be speaking to me about something he's telling me to do and then I know it's also work for everybody else and then sometimes it's just for me but this was for me and everybody else so um, don't worry I'll be very transparent when I get to that part but the prophesying part is when you see people talking about let me give you an example they're praying for you or they're not praying for you let's just say they're not even praying for you but they know you're down and out they know a little bit about your situation and they say girl listen or, 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 or you know man listen you know you got to get it together god is a god that is, 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 is nothing is impossible for him he sits on high he's above all of this the joy of the lord is your strength you know what i mean um so they're pulling that inspired word from the from the Bible that's prophesying you you're, you're speaking things that are coming from the Word of God so it's accurate but you're speaking it to encourage someone to strengthen them mind or, or, or energy wise right to get them moving like you can do this you know what I'm saying so that's prophesying now let me see let me show you what the difference of prophecy prophecy is a prophecy is a prediction on utterance 
prediction or utterance, if you notice, they both start out the same way, right? From a prophet inspired by his God or her God, right? Inspired by his or her God. That denotes like intimacy. Um, that God may be speaking to that that prophet, that man or that woman, that apostle, right then and there and giving him a word for you, right? Or they could get it through a dream, but it was directly from God, right? It's not you as a member of the body of Christ, as a brethren, right, or a sister in the body of Christ. We all brethren, of course, but you know what I mean. In the body of Christ, trying to encourage someone. When you're trying to encourage someone and you're using the word and you're pulling from the word, you are prophesying. It is not prophecy. Okay? Now, can the average person receive prophecy from time to time for someone? Yeah, because we all got the Holy Spirit in us. In us. God is, is sit, still sits on the throne. The Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit in me is in you. And so He is the one. The Holy Spirit is God's authority, his, his power here on earth. He's the one that can decide that, you know what, you're in the right place at the right time. You're at that, at that grocery store. You, you have a heart for me and for people. And I'm about to use you right now to speak to this lady. And all of a sudden, you don't know what happened to you, what took you over. Of course, you realize it's the Holy Spirit, but at the time, you're like, what is going on with me? And you go over and you just say, ma'am, I just want to tell you I love your blouse. That is so pretty. Da, 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 da. And that was just an icebreaker, right? And she's like, oh, how thank you. And all of a sudden, you're telling her. I also wanted to say something to you. I feel like the Lord is telling me to tell you that you want to get that house um, next Wednesday. Da, 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 da. And you're like, wow, I can't believe I did. And you calling up your prayer partner friends and your, your church folk. And you're like... I just gave this lady a word of prophecy. And then, and that will be a word of prophecy, right? And then you go two weeks later, and she's there again. You run into her. And she's like, oh, my God, what you said was right. Da -da 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 -da. And then you notice that that really never happens to you for years and years. But it could again. But it doesn't happen to you often. Um, That's because you may either not be... At that point in time, God is not ready to start to train you up in that because he's still God. The Holy Spirit still does what he wants to do when he does it, when he needs to do it. Um, but you definitely can't say, oh, I must be a prophet. Uh, I must be in the office of a prophet, which is a gift. One of the gifts that the Holy Spirit gives is um, the fivefold ministry, right? But that's something as a prophet, you have to be born into that. At, at birth, you're chosen to be a prophet, okay? Um, now, I don't know, and I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, admitting what I don't know. I don't know how the apostolic thing works. I do know that you were sent one as an apostle, apostolic. But I don't know if that's part of the being called from birth. That part I don't know. I'm still looking into that one. But I do know God has given me several dreams and prophecies from other people who um, didn't know anything about me, about my apostolic and my prophet, my prophetic ministry. And so that's how I know I have an office of a prophet. Not just because of people who told me. They were really confirmations. I didn't know anything about fivefold ministry at first, many years ago. I didn't. I grew up in a church, but I didn't really know anything. But I grew up in a household with a mother that was prophetic. So she would say and know things all the time. Be like, what in the world? My friends would be like, your mom know? How your mom know that? So I, I now, years later, I realized, oh, mom, you know, you, you know, you, you know. So she then tells me, oh, someone did pray over me a few times in the past. Like one or two people told her that she was also called to be a prophet. As soon as she said it, it messed with my spirit. Didn't surprise me. Um, because she would get all kinds of prophetic dreams like I do over the years. And some of those things would actually come to pass. Um, and I, I, I do that too a lot. I dream a lot. Um, although sometimes I can get an actual word from the Lord. But I do a lot of prophetic, you know, a lot of dreaming. Um, so I'm a seer prophet, right? But at the end of the day, um, that is not the same as being in the office of a prophet. Okay, so you have to be real careful with that. Uh, you have a lot of people out here thinking that when you prophesying, it means that you're a prophet or that you receive prophecy. That is not the same thing. So that's what I wanted to make sure you guys know. That's really important. And the reason why that's important is because it goes along with the word, which is the Lord had been starting to speak to me about spending more time getting more scriptures into my um, repertoire, right, to really learn more about his word. Um, I mean, I know about his word, but to really know more about it, it's like, Obviously, he's saying, you know, you could do more studying, even more studying than you already do. And I have to admit, he's, I'm sure he's right, because I used to know even more scriptures than I do now. For some reason, I, you know, I started to focus on 
uh, researching and not really studying if that makes any sense right because I am a researcher by heart um, I don't know some of you may if you look at any of my past videos you know that I am studying for my um, doctorate I am uh, working on my um, literature review right now for anybody that excuse me knows what that means excuse me I am working on my literature review so I'm almost done with my research study um, so that I can uh, do my oral defense and all that and you know get my doctorate um, but I was probably doing more research especially when he started telling me to do these videos on this channel um, I was going and researching just so I can make sure that if I spoke to you guys I can give you a scripture or two or whatever but at the end of the day um, he wants me to really seek him to come into him uh, to in, to spend time with him more in that arena because I'm always praying uh, praise and worshiping is not a problem for me I love praise and worshiping but the really 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 getting deeper into his word and getting those scriptures into me because the Holy Spirit can't help you to remember anything if you don't have anything in you to remember. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to have the word in you. The Holy Spirit is, he's a comfort, a teacher, a guide. He brings things back to our remembrance. He's the power, the authority of God here on the earth. And so I just wanted to speak to someone today and encourage you that while you're concerned or maybe having fear about this election and all the drama going on, know that America is not going to fall. Know that right now God is calling his people, uh, people including myself, to spend more time with him if you spend time with him don't feel bad just spend more time find some way to spend more time with him I can I, trust me if he's saying something about it some of you know that you could spend more time I don't care if it's extra 10 minutes 15 minutes do what you can but he's calling you to, to come closer and when you get in that place you don't have no fear like I said earlier I'm not apologizing for it I don't have any fear when he told me do not fear about the coronavirus I was good I have him only time I wear a mask is when I got going in the store I hate them freaking masks, I'm being honest, because I understand the agenda behind, the, the demonic agenda behind, again, that's in a couple of my other videos, so I'm not going to waste time going into that here, but go look at it, and you'll understand why I feel the way I feel, it's not because I, I believe the virus is fake, no, 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 the virus is very real, and I would like to say to anyone who has lost anybody, or anyone who has caught the COVID virus and suffered, I'm sorry, and I'm glad that you are feeling better, because if you're looking at this, you're probably feeling better. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad that you made it through. Um, if you lost a loved one, I'm so sorry. I really am. I truly am sorry um, about that. It's not easy losing a loved one. My uh, sister, uh, half-sister, just lost her sister, and I just had to pray with her the other day. She started to cry out of nowhere, which makes sense, of course. You know, she's still grieving. It only happened earlier part of this year. But it wasn't due to COVID. It was um, actually uh, due to cancer. But, nonetheless, I understand, you know, I lost my grandmother, I mean, I understand um, grief, I understand mourning, and so forth. Um, and so my heart goes out to you, my prayers are with you, but I hate what they're doing with it, how they're screwing the numbers, how they're lying, the media, like I said, it's just lying, lying, lying. Every once in a while you find a truth in there somewhere, but it's so hard to find, it's not even worth looking at them. So I'm going to tell you right now, you don't want to keep looking at the news. You don't. Try to look at channels like, um, and you don't want to look at all these all the time either, because once you actually have that peace of God in you, and you know that what God is saying, you have a peace. You just know this thing got to play out in God's timing, but we're covered, right? Um, the ecclesia, the church is praying. We are fasting. I've been fasting and praying throughout this whole thing. God told me, do not fear. Um, he got it. He told me, do process, you know what I mean? Which means God's justice, his liberty, his justice. Um, I told you guys I got the uh, 555. I got grace that he was saying he wants to give us grace in the, for the next few years as well as God's justice. That's why he told me due process. He knew I would understand due process to mean liberty, freedom, justice. But he was talking about his justice. Um, so his justice will be done. Keep watching. Keep watching. Keep praying. Keep believing. Don't fear. Live your life the way you would live it if this wasn't going on. But make sure you include spending more time with God because this is what he's talking about right now. Um, so for those that may not think that they have the Holy Spirit, right? Because the Holy Spirit lives within us and is outside of us, okay? Um, let me just give you real quick what the requirements are just to have the Holy Spirit come into you. So the way that you receive the Holy Spirit, baptism, the baptism of fire, meaning even speaking in tongues and all of that, is the salvation. You have to have salvation. You receive the Holy Spirit when you receive Christ as Lord. Accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior and being born again. The scripture for that would be 2 Corinthians. It's two scriptures actually. 
2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, and John 3, verse 3. I'm going to let y'all read that for yourself. Give you a reason to go to the Bible. <laughs> surrendering is number two. You want to surrender. And surrender is not the same as seeking God. Okay? Surrender means surrendering and yielding yourself to the Holy Spirit, to God's Spirit. Because you got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit may be the third person of the Trinity, but He is equal. Okay? The only thing you don't do with the Holy Spirit is pray to Him. But you can worship Him. You want to talk to Him. You want you don't want to grieve Him. S sin will grieve Him, right? Um, surrendering, yielding to Him. You have to have a willingness to want to obey God because you love God, because you, you're curious about God, because you really just want to have a better life, and God can give that to you through Jesus Christ by way of the Holy Spirit that dwells within you. If you confess that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit dwells within you. Um, because the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He won't force himself on you. Um, but he must be put first. Uh, seeking God. That's the number three. Salvation, surrendering, and seeking God. The fire of God comes after you seek for it. Acts 1 verse 8. Matthew 7 verse 7. All by faith. Faith by hearing the word of God. Okay. Alright. So I think that's pretty much what I wanted to say. The Lord really wants people to go to a higher place. Because when I read that scripture. Let me just go ahead and um, come back to that scripture. Because I believe that's what I did. Sorry. I came on, came away from the, um, the scripture I was looking at because I wanted to finish up explaining something real quick. There it is. Okay. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Everything I said made sense, but I need to now, to end this, I'm going to wrap it up now. Um, 1 Corinthians 14, verses 2 through 5. Let me read this and go through this and show you in this what I'm talking about when it comes to the difference between prophecy and prophesying. For, this is Paul speaking to the church of Corinth, if you didn't know. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men. Now Paul, just a quick side note, was an apostle, but he was also a prophet. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but unto God, for no man understandeth him, or but how be it in the spirit he speak of mysteries. Okay. So that's the part where you know you, you're speaking in tongues, but you're edifying. Like I said, you're edifying yourself. Um, you're strengthening yourself. You know, while you're praying for yourself, other people, whatever. But he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification, or exhortation, and comfort. So now he's giving you the, the definition that I just gave you about prophesying. Not prophecy, prophesying with an S, S-Y-I-N-G. Next, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. Okay, now he's going back again to what he was saying kind of earlier. But now he's saying it out loud. Speaketh unto himself, he edifies himself. But he that prophesieth edifies the church. So when you prophesy, if, right? You um, you mean you have an interpreter, because now you're giving prophecy. Um, you have an interpreter so that the whole church can be either you have the gift of interpretation, so you can interpret your own tongues, or someone there, which usually is the the better way forward, I believe, because the Bible does say one or two. More, you know, uh, we have a witness, so someone else is there to say, well, I know exactly what this person is saying in the spirit, um, in their prayer language, and this is what the Lord. Thus says the Lord or whatever through that um, speaking in tongues. So that edifies the whole church because the whole church can hear that. And it doesn't have to be a technically a church. But even if you have a prayer group or people that needs to hear that. Somebody break out in tongues while everybody else is praying. Then somebody else needs to be able to have the interpretation. If not, it's not doing anybody in there any good. It's a sign for a non-believer because they're going to be all like, what is that they doing? You know, but a believer is not going to be thrown off by someone speaking in tongues because they know about tongues. Or they, you know they understand tongues if they're that type of believer um i wouldn't and paul said i would that ye all speak with tongues like he's not saying anything bad about tongues he wished that they all speak in tongues because the fire of the baptism of the holy spirit brings you additional level of authority and power but rather that you prophesy because he wants you to help one another to you know um edify to encourage to exhort to comfort one another for great is he that prophesied than he that speaketh with tongues He's not saying tongues is bad. He's just saying when you can prophesy to, to, to encourage people, not prophecy, but prophesying, except he interpret. See what I said about the interpretation, except that he interpret that the church may receive edifying from if someone is actually given interpretation of those tongues. So that's what the Lord wants you guys to know, that those who already speak in tongues, great. 
Just seek him more in this season. Don't get caught up in the news and election and all that. Seek him more. Build your relationship with him. Don't live in fear. Know that God is God. Seek him to hear from yourself what I'm saying, what some of these other prophets are saying. But you have to pray. You have to seek him. Okay? Everything we need faith. And you will see God give you peace. But you have to have the right attitude, the right heart before you come to him. Okay? You can't come to him with this crazy attitude like, I believe this. But anyway, Lord, I don't know. You know, because nine times out of ten, he's not going to respond to you. Um, because you already... You, you shut the Holy Spirit out. You, you close the door. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit because you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, then you'd want to do that first. Um, that would help you to hear him more clearly. Um, and let me just see if there's any other scriptures I need to give you. Um, and for those that are already speaking tongues, of course, he wants you to come to another level. Like myself, he wants us to be risen, you know, to grow and come up to another level in our um, tongues. Because there's there's different types of tongues, different levels um, in power and authority in the spirit, in, your, in your prayer language. But it doesn't mean that you're not saved if you don't speak in tongues. Let me be clear about that. That does not mean you're not saved. Um, but you definitely want to seek the Holy Spirit so that you can obtain that gift that is a gift that the Holy Spirit can give you and it's not an option God wants everybody to speak in tongues because it brings you into even a deeper level of relationship and in a, in an a area of power and authority in him to do whatever it is that he has called you to do on this earth realm on this earth plane sorry I think spirit realm earth plane uh, here on the earth so that is it um, take what I've given you and go and um, Research it. Let me just throw a few scriptures out that has to do with the Holy Spirit that I want you all to know. One specifically, Ephesians 4 verse 30. Um, make sure that you grieve not the Holy Spirit. If you're not sure what that means, look it up. Look it up. Um, this I'm doing this on purpose. I could try to I could read them all and explain it, but this would make you all go to the Bible and read it, right? The Holy Spirit is an emblem of uh, emblem of the Spirit, is symbolic, and the Spirit is in the Bible. It's oil. Uh, wind, water, um, I think that's all I can think of right now. Some of you might think of something else I'm not thinking about. Just like Jesus is the Lamb, you know, Lamb of God as well. Um, but he's not a real lamb. Jesus is also the, the, the Lion of Judah, but he's not a, a real lion. It just talks about the different things that represent him in the Bible. Just like with the Holy Spirit, you got the oil, the water, the wind, you know. Um, but none of those are really the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. Remember, we were made in God's image, in their image. So if the Holy Spirit is part of God, Jesus, because he's the Trinity, and he is a person, he's the third person of the Trinity. Third don't mean he's last, doesn't mean that he's not as important. He is equally important because it's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Please get that right. I know I'm just giving this out to you, um, but I, I'm trying to encourage you to go and research for yourself as well. But let me just give you a little bit more. So as long as you have salvation and you're surrendering to him, totally not, oh, well, I'll surrender these things to you, Lord, because I think I can do this myself. No, surrender every area of your life, every area, finances, business, education, uh, marriage, family, everything, everything. That Everything means everything, right? Um, read Acts 19, verse 6. Read Genesis 2, verse 7. Read Job 33, verse 4. Oh, okay. Psalm 23, verse 5. That talks about the oil, the anointing of my head. That's the Holy Spirit. Um, it's amazing. Uh, when he has come, he will improve the world of sin. A second here. Oh, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 10. John 16 verse 8, Romans 8 verse 26, Matthew 12 verse 31, I think I said uh, Acts 1 verse 8 already, um, First Corinthians 12 verse 3, I don't know if I said that one, 
1 Corinthians 12, verse 3. And there's probably some more you can find in the Bible, but by all means, you know. And if there is a specific topic you guys want me to teach on, because I'll be honest with you, what I'm doing right now is whatever the Lord leads me to do, then I get on here. I'm probably coming on every other week. Seems like it. But if you guys email me at Lakeisha at NarrowPathInstitute.com and tell me about a topic that you really would like teaching on, I don't care if it's just one person that needs teaching. I will find the time and I will do it. Um, I will respond to you and let you know about when I will be doing the video. So, because I probably need a couple of days to really make sure I pray over it and do my my research and pull the scriptures for you or whatever. Um, but I will I will do it. Um, so, please don't be discouraged because I don't come on as often as you would like. Um, I'm still trying to get some things together. God just started having me do this the last several months. Um, so, it wasn't easy for me to get in front of the camera at first, but I'm here. I'm doing it. You know. So I thank you for your support, for those people who did, didn't put nasty comments or whatever, although I'm okay with that. If people start doing that, I'm fine. I'm not going to worry about it. But I, I think it's a group, nice group of people who have um, subscribed and that do come on to look. i um, been very, very respectful, and I appreciate that. And all I ask is that you just, you know, hear me out. You know, if you don't agree with me, that's fine. Um, I'm still praying for you. Either way, God loves you. I love you, even if I never meet you, um, because I love God's people. I really do. Now, Clearly, I'm going to be honest, people get on my nerves sometimes, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And y'all know I'm telling the truth, especially if it's your family or your, you know, some of your friends sometimes or whatever. They like family because I really don't know about the friend thing too much. Usually people that are my friends, they become like really close like family. Um, so the friend thing don't last long with me, uh, which is a good thing because it scales up, right? But yeah, um, but anyway, that's it. I don't want to hold you guys too much longer. It's almost 45 minutes, so it's about 45 minutes, I think. And I was really trying to be on no more than 30. So I'm a little late, I'm a little off. And for those of you who have been following my videos, y'all know it's hard for me to stop talking. This is part of my gifting. This is part of my anointing. I have a lot to say. And it's hard to sometimes kind of just, because when I start, the Holy Spirit starts to move. And so sometimes it just flows. Revelations just flow out of me sometimes. Um, sometimes I'll be getting stuff and I just have to like hold it in because um, I don't know what to do with it sometimes. But I'm getting better at understanding how God is going to use, how he's using me. And I still don't know how it's all going to look, but I definitely have an idea of what he's doing. I do sit under, you know, ministry. Um, I do have several ministries that I kind of check in with, but I have one that I pay my tithes to, that I give seed to, so seed to. Um, so I believe in those things. So don't think I'm just out here swinging in the wind. I'm not. I'm really not. Um, I'm still getting more training myself. Um, I'm, I'm submitted, you know, to God and to the ministry that God has placed me in, and, uh, had me partner with, and placed me under, I'm assuming, as well, yeah. Um, and I get some of my, you know, of course I get, you know, some of my teachings from them. But I had come a long way before I was put in their sphere of influence. But I'm so grateful that God did it. Um, it's an awesome, awesome husband and wife team. And um, so I really appreciate my um, uh, prophetess uh, and her husband. Well, she's also, I guess, a pastor too because, you know, she has a church. Um, but, and, and they're from New York. She's from New York. So anyway, I just leave it at that but just letting you know just letting some people know that i'm not one of the people that's trying to get on youtube and just trying to make a name for myself i really care about people and i just want to do what god would have me to do to help you um and that's it and yes pay your tithes you know what i'm saying and do it with a cheerful you can be a cheerful giver do it with a cheerful spirit don't do it from a wrong spirit if you if you uh participate in god's economy you will be blessed it's not about somebody trying to get your money although yes there's people out here trying to get your money but you have to get close to God. That's why you got to get close to God. Because God will show you who to pay attention to, who to sow into, who not to. Um, sometimes God will let you sow into a ministry that, uh, I'm going to tell you, and this happened to me. He'll let you sow into a ministry that he still will use them to bless you, even if they may not be all right with what they're doing. Because if he's training you in some area, he might allow you to experience certain things that might not be so great. But this is what you get out of that. You trust God. And you know you're still blessed and he still got you covered no matter what somebody else does, okay? Because if he didn't allow you to discern certain things or he did allow you to discern some things but he still told you to keep doing it, keep moving forward, keep, keep you know, staying with that program, stay at that church, don't leave yet, keep praying for them, of course. Uh, but don't talk about them, don't be angry, don't keep an attitude, but stay there until he releases you, you don't go anywhere. And some people find that really hard to believe because they're like, well, if somebody can do this to me, I'm gone. You know, no, 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 no. Trust me. I've, I've been there, done that. I never left, though. This is where I'm better in the sense of where I'm at now. I'm not saying better than you. I'm saying in a better situation because I didn't 
move in my own flesh. I, I wasn't wise in my own eyes. I actually stayed put. It was uncomfortable. I, I was like, Lord, are you sure about this person? I don't know. But what he showed me after the six years, yes, I said six years. What he showed me after the six years is that that person was still used mightily to prophesy into my life, to give me prophecy, to um, two different things, prophesy, give me prophecy, um, to pray with me, you know, just encourage me. But he definitely, some, some of those prophecies, uh, the things that he prophesied, the prophecy that he's given me, some of those prophecies had come to pass. Um, and so I was like, wow. But I knew there were some things that were a little off. But he was used mightily to help me in my walk really seriously and then eventually god removed him oh yeah oh yeah but don't you think that you need to do something let god be god he got you covered trust me and so what happened is when you come out of a situation like that you realize oh my god i wasn't even focused on the money i was focused on god and god still had me i paid the money i never wanted for nothing so didn't really matter and i gave it with a cheerful heart because i stopped worrying about I think they might be up to something. I don't think they're too kosher in certain areas. Or I don't know about them. Well, you don't need to know about them. God needs to know about them. You just need to know what God is telling you to do. That's why you got to have a close relationship with him. And he'll tell you what to do. He's not going to allow you to be hurt to the point of actually hurting, warning you. He's not going to let that happen. But he will allow you to, to experience a little discomfort, um, to be agitated because he's trying to, uh, what's the word for it? Um, um, like, pressure put pressure on you to change you to reveal to you what you need to work on what you need not to worry about be anxious for nothing you know um let god fight your battles leave it over to him and he will still bless you through the whole thing and teach you something and to um critique your character right in the area so you become more christ-like not christ because christ is christ but christ-like and so that's what i learned and i'm still learning you got to learn honor. You got to learn kingdom economy. You got to learn these things. So I'm just trying to put a fire up beneath you guys in this season to get you distracted off of that drama because that drama is not really drama for us. God got that. You focus on God first and do what you need to do for yourself, for your household, you know, take care of yourself, get your rest. And like I said, just stay close to God and he got you covered. All right. So I'm going to let you guys go. Um, let me just do a quick prayer. I just feel like I'm, I need to do a prayer to close this out. Father God, I thank you for today. I thank you, Lord, for my obedience. But even more so, Father God, I thank you for the obedience of those who have clicked on to this video and who have taken the time to continue to watch it all the way through. Who have received the revelation, Father God, coming straight from you through me. That they don't. See, but I pray, Father God, that they are not really focused on me, but that they focus on you and that they feel in their spirit that it was you speaking directly to them. I pray that something that I may have said, even an example, Father God, may have spoken to their personal life, that they can say, oh, you know what? Oh, thank you, God. That happened to me too. Because that's happened to me plenty of times, Lord. And I know how much of a blessing that is. When you don't have anyone else to talk to or to call up, but you just have these YouTube videos of some of these people that they know that you've led them to. And I pray that I'm one of them, Father God. And if that's the case, I pray that I'm a blessing to them, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. And so, Father God, I just pray a peace over them, Father God. Give them rest in their mind, Lord, regarding the stuff that's going on in the United States of America, Father God. And for those that may be watching that are outside of the United States of America, I pray that you pray for us. We praying for you because so goes America, so goes the world. And so we praying for everybody. I'm praying for everybody. And Lord, I pray that you encourage them, Father God, that you give them a peace of mind, that you give them a calming of the spirit, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I just pray, Father God, that you cover and protect these loved ones, these precious children of yours, Father God, as they move into their week next week. Hallelujah. That you order their steps, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Lord, I just pray. And I thank you, Father God, for all of this time for us to come together and for everything that you've spoken through me to them. Hallelujah. And I plead your blood, Jesus, over them from the top of their head to the bottom of the soles of their feet for further revelation. I pray, Father God, for them to have dreams in the night, dreams from you, God, visions, anything that you can give them, Father God, that will speak to the matters of their heart. Hallelujah. Whether it concerns the United States of America or their own country, or even just their life in general. I know, Father God, you are faithful to, re to respond. And I pray that they have ears to hear and they have eyes to see. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name and of the blood of Jesus. Amen. 
I thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time with a good word uh, from the Lord, of course. None of this is me, all him. Thank you guys. Love you. Have a great week and bye-bye.